Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, we're going to take care of our Deimos mission, but also we have this Jupiter mission to launch. And I've called it Jovian 1 uh, because I wasn't feeling particularly imaginative. Uh, so, <laughs> Jovian referring to Jupiter itself. So here we have a Pioneer 10-11 class antenna, which sure as heck should be able to handle Jupiter because that's what Pioneer 10 slash 11 did. So, I mean, and further. So, uh, and it says a high power demands at 160 watts. Okay, so we've got to take that into consideration. Comparatively low bandwidth. I don't know what effect that has, but it's got the uh, 20 gigameter range. Uh, the other option was uh, this antenna, but it seems to be radial attached. It's got somewhat less of a range, but the same electric charge. The Pioneer 10 slash 11 class antenna is a little bit heavier, so that's a trade-off. So it says 160 watts, and if we take a look at our RTGs, because we have RTGs, much to my own shock and amazement, yes, we do have RTGs. Where are they? There they are. Multi 100 watt RTGs. Well, this says uh, 0.16 per second which I think translates to 160 watts, I hope. So, yeah, so each one of these is 160 watts, so we have double the amount for the antenna, but of course we have other things like the probe core. So taking a look at the Ranger Block 3 core, well, that's only 80 watts at most. So it should be all right, even with any sort of decay that might occur with RTGs. And yeah, so good power situation there. Uh, interestingly, the main cost of the probe, you see that the probe itself is 7830 uh, The main cost is not the RTGs. The RTGs are only 1000 apiece, and we have two of them, so that's 2000 And it's not the dish or anything like that, or the controller. The controller is pretty hefty, it's uh, 1580 But the main cost is the reaction wheel. I thought it prudent to put a small inline reaction wheel, just 0.1 torque, uh, now that would require 100 watts uh, when we use it, I suppose. It's not going to be using that constantly. Uh, but at 2,500, now I've complained about the cost of the reaction wheels before, but this gives you an idea. I mean, they, they cost more than two, one of them costs more than two RTGs, which is impressive. It's impressive. So anyway, we've got uh, many instruments. We've got the uh, orbital perturbation experiment. We've got the orbital telescope, goo container, magnetometer boom. And actually, uh, while I'm at it, let me uh, log visual. I'll tell it to do all the things on this um, on this particular action group because we're going to have signal delay, right? Oops, we are going to have signal delay. So we should get all of the science except for the goo container on that action group. Now we have a Able Avionics package and Commutron 16s. It's interesting to note, by the way, that you know you would wonder why do I use the Commutron 32. Well, the Commutron 32, each of them costs 600, and the Commutron 16 only costs 5, which not only means that we, uh, of course, cut costs, but it also means that the build time is less if you use the Commutron 16s than if you use the 32s, and we really care about build time this one uh, on this occasion. Uh, because our Earth to Jupiter transfer window is in 35 days, you can see 27 day build time, and that's because I took that into account for other things as well, like solar panels here. I decided that it'd be a good idea to have extra power for this Able Avionics package here, and uh, so the, the solar panels will take care of that, even though it's a little bit of a cost. But I use the least costly and least build time solar panels I could. And yeah, it might be the case that this hangs out with the probe for a little bit longer. We'll see how much fuel it has left. Uh, the reason I put communication with these here is because um, the, this dish has to be tuned and it'll be tuned to Earth, but I wanted something that, uh, you know, Omni ones. And that's why I have those as well. Let's check, check the cone angle on the uh, the cone angle is 3.3 degrees. That should be fine for Jupiter. Okay, and then the next stage we have... Let's package that up. The next stage we have is a Centaur stage with uh, two Centaur, uh, two RL-10 engines. We don't have any upgrade for the RL-10 since the last time you saw RL-10s at work here. So they're just there. 
And uh, the, we sort of have an awkward situation where the centaur stage is 3.05 meters, that's really what it was. And then the rest of the rocket is the Nico 411B, which you've seen before. Uh, four NK-15 engines, one NK-15V, and then one NK-19. Let's make sure it's a 19 and not a 9V, just in case. Uh, it is a 19. So we have that standard rocket of ours. And unfortunately, the upper diameter of this standard rocket is 3.6 meters, not 3.05, so we have an additional transition zone here. I didn't want to put the entire Centaur stage in a fairing, though that would have uh, made it look a little bit better. So that's our rocket. And that is going to be our mission. It can be built in uh, 27 days. You can see the three stages of Nico 411 are enough to get the Centaur stage, and then the Asterisk 2 stage to orbit at a total payload mass is 20.9 tons call it and the total delta v after we get into orbit is 8500 or so okay so that is what we're going to build let us build and uh we could build another one in 32 days let me do that let me do that uh, there's no telling we could send it to somewhere else later on after all so yeah let's build two of them and they're not too expensive, right? 23,000. Fairly cheap. And uh, I think uh, some uh, some people were uh, talking about uh, budget in the comments. So I want to broach the budget um, subject. And when we see 23,000 funds, that's supposed to be 19... Uh, one th each fund is $1,960. So if we translate that, that's 23 million in 1960 which then you multiply by 8 to get what it is in current dollars. Roughly it's 8, I think. And so you're talking about on the order of somewhere between 160 and $200 million. So that's a reasonable price for the rocket. Where it gets a little bit complicated is actually the probe. Um, the payloads actually should cost more than the rockets. The rocket is the main cost here, but uh, if you take a look at the pricing for stuff, and you take a look at an interplanetary probe, those cost a lot more than the than the launchers that they are launched on. So there is something weird about the pricing in that respect. As far as our total budget, uh, you take a look at this and you compare it to what we said. So um, 160 to 200. If we can launch 100 of those, then our total cumulative budget, after we've picked up quite a lot of contracts that we haven't fulfilled yet, well, 1,000 times that means that that's about, let's say, let's just call it $3 billion in 1960, times 8 is $24 billion in current dollars. So $24 billion. That doesn't seem unreasonable, actually. That's about the yearly budget of NASA. In fact, we would be underfunded because this is money that we're going to be used over a number of years. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, the cost of the probes themselves is a little bit cheap. The cost of the rockets is correct, and our budget is correct. The problem is that the payloads are too cheap. So that's, that's my assessment of that. Alright, so here we are with our Deimos probe. Again, we're trying to land on Deimos, which is the tricky part. And I've plotted an approach uh, to within 57 kilometers of Deimos here, but we know that's not going to happen. Uh, it's not going to be that close. Um, it'll cost 330.7 meters per second, but if you take a look, that's 57.3. And if I nudge it just a little bit, 0.1 meter per second off, and it's 106.2 kilometers. So we'll have to do other adjustments, but hey, uh, considering our next stage has 1,156 meters per second, and we still have the locked lander, uh, that's pretty good. This is currently out of fuel, but we'll have a tag along with its uh, power resources until we actually have to do this burn and that's in 16 hours and while this is going on of course our Jovian probe is building is under construction so we are of course correcting inclination with respect to Deimos as well and that's about 15 degrees worth and that's why we're doing it from so far out okay I think we should begin operations now we need to separate off this portion and hope that we have an no let's not hope let's check that we have some internal power here yeah that's got its full power 
Currently, our orbital period is one day and 22 hours. Okay. Separation. And that command is in. Let's check. Yes. So we don't want a double stage or anything like that, which would be bad. Okay, off it goes. And now uh, point me to the node, please. Woo. Vigorous. Oh, wobbliness. Um, well, it'll take a long time to engage SAS anyway. Let me try. Find controls. Doesn't seem to do too much. Wasting a lot of fuel on the wiggling. Yeah, it doesn't look like fine controls changes the actual consumption of RCS. I don't know if it does it in stop and realism overhaul, not so much. Well, at least our Jupiter probe will have some a reaction wheel on board. It is very annoying. Well, it brought us out of time warp for some reason or another right now, so I guess we should go. Before it wastes more of the fuel. Here we go. Ignition. You know, I'm less wiggly than Smarty SS is, even without SAS on. It's annoying to have to keep to the maneuver node manually, but... And we know how touchy that maneuver node is, so we're going to be pretty far off. I don't know, I don't know why Smarty SS can't capture this... What I'm doing right now is just firing the RCS just tiny little bits to adjust. Not not full force. I don't know why that doesn't seem to be smart ASS's thing. Or, you know, any other I'm sure flight computer will be even worse. I know, I've I've tried it before. Okay, well that's a two digit kilometer separation. Guess I'll take that for now. Okay. Well, let's watch our uh, electric charge consumption. Well, while we're in time warp, it goes into low power mode, so that's good. Okay, let's see if we can plot something here. Uh, 252 it looks like, and that's sort of a landing orbit. Let's go a little bit higher than that. Okay. 251 or so. All right, well, let's do this first maneuver first. Now I'm gonna have SAS fighting against me, but at least SAS is good at holding things stable. I'm just using RCS to do this portion, this correction. When we land, we would like to land at a location that faces Earth. It would be bad to be on the opposite side of Deimos from Earth. Okay, we are now in Deimos Sphere of Influence, and we must get to work quickly. Okay, I think we can wait till periapsis at this point. Good thing our periapsis is passing by on the side of Deimos. That will give us communication with... Actually, it's passing by quite high. So, yeah. In any case, we would have had good communication with Earth at this location. Nope, oh, oh, oh. mm, not quite the orbit I want. Uh, wiggling around does seem to uh, change it quite a lot, though. Uh, actually, that doesn't even have a apoapsis. Maybe we should just come straight down at this point. Yeah. I don't feel too safe about our position right now, anyway. So... If we come down on this side, it'd be good. It's lit and everything. Yeah, I think this, this particular location looks fine. And we'll dispose of the go-around stage on the way down. Well, actually, we should dispose of it right now. Oh, it's got antennae. Hmm. Maybe we should leave it in orbit. It could be useful for later things. Okay, well, that might be in orbit. We have to wait 12 minutes. Whoa, that was a kick. Okay, unlock fuels. That kick 
is enough to have thrown that off of orbit, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, it, can, it has a controller. It has communication. I think. Oh, I'll take some time. Um, let's see. I really shouldn't be paying attention to this right now. Um, okay, uh, no, no. Mm, there, that's an orbit. Okay, you can spin all you like. It's fine. Whew. Okay, we need to get back to the actual mission. Okay. Now we're talking. Okay, we've got a satellite in orbit around Deimos, and now we have to land. This trajectory is not a landing trajectory. I think I'm just gonna use RCS to head down. It's gonna be a little bit tricky not like bouncing up again. Okay, well we're one kilometer away I guess. I should activate this antenna even though it's, well it's not gonna activate for a while but just for formality's sake. Surface horizontal speed is currently around 200 millimeters per second. Okay, very low surface horizontal speed. Approaching at 2 meters per second, we are now 100 meters above the surface of Deimos. 0.3 meters per second, 1 meter, and... Um, oh, hold on. We gotta use RCS to force ourselves down here. Oh boy. Yes, I'm skidding. Okay. Um, I need to turn SAS off, so I'm gonna do that. There we go. Okay, I think we should have landed. Should say the most landing, but we don't have our telemetry analysis yet, so. Oh, we've got an extra locked tank, by the way. That's in the probe core itself. That's a dish. Come on. Give me the probe core. All right, analyze telemetry. That'll take 12 minutes. <laughs> I should have done that earlier. Okay. Oh, it's going up again. It doesn't say situation landed. Okay. Seriously, stay there. Um, if I time warp, will it be all right? It won't wiggle or anything, right? Okay, in theory, this should be the telemetry coming up. Right? Oh, the communitrons, right. Well, I guess I could do the other experiments. I'll hold off on that because that might topple the whole vehicle. Let's do the bio sample. Okay, we have analyzed telemetry. Let's uh, transmit that data. And we fulfilled the contract. Uncrewed Deimos landing. We have begun our conquest of Deimos. Okay. I don't think we can do an oral perturbation experiment here, but we might as well try. Magnetometer goes out. Okay, from Deimos' Highlands. We could hop around Deimos and get a lot of stuff, I think. Okay, biological sample, transmit. Transmit, yeah. Micrometeorite, transmit. I should wait until the, the stuff, the transmissions have finished. It's rocking a lot now. It might be... Hmm. Yeah, we are now no longer on the ground. That magnetometer boom might be complicating things. Temperature scan from the surface once the goo data is uploaded. Well, uh, log that data. Maybe we'll be on the ground when we do it. Maybe we won't. I would really like SAS on right now, but a little bit too late for that. Not as soft a landing as the previous times. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Push down, push down. Oh, boy. Okay, successfully back down again. 
Okay, gravity scan from Namos' Highlands was possible. Let's transmit that. We are getting signs. Okay, and then the radio plasma wave thingamajig. Oh, it's not suitable for surface stuff. Okay, so that's about it. That is our Deimos mission. We have done it successfully, finally, after a number of tries. And now we can focus on our Jupiter mission. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, here we are with our Jupiter mission, and it looks like it's going to be a nighttime launch based on the relative inclination with respect to the moon. I always line up with the moon because it's a good approximation for the plane of the rest of the solar system. And as you can see, the moon's orbit with everything else, well, except for one of our missions. But anyway, so it's time to go. Unfortunately, it took two days to roll this out, even though it only took 27 days to build the rocket. That's a ridiculous rollout time. So I might have to manually fix that because that just seems obnoxious. But anyway, here we are. SAS on, thrall is up, and ignition. And launch. Up we go. Okay, we've lost one engine. Uh, the other three are attempting to compensate. Oh boy. We're uh, just going through high dynamic pressure here. This could be bad. Uh, come on, baby. Gotta try and tell it to just go to where the probe rate vector is. Don't wiggle around too much. Okay, I th think we can manage this. Let's hope there's nothing more. We'll have to maintain a particularly high angle of attack or pitch for the rest of the launch. Fortunately, the NK-15s aren't anywhere closer to maximum burn time on this stage, I don't think. So the fact that, you know, they're going to take longer to burn because one engine is out is not going to be a problem. We have some oscillations. Uh, NK-15s do thrall down, so let me do that. Okay. Set. And ignition. Oh, that staging was bad. Whew. Yeah, that was uh, incorrect staging right there. We definitely did not want the fairing to go at the same time. Well, at 70 kilometers is a bad time for the fairing to set, but... Anyway, <laughs> we've got a bit of a residual roll which we can't correct because there's no... Um, there's no way, there's no vernier or anything on this stage. So we'll just deal with that. Oh, I haven't throttled up. Jeez, I was wondering why the TWR was so low. And yeah, throttle. Throttle is good. We may or may not be required to use the Centaur stage to complete orbit. I'm not sure right now. It's pretty close. Uh, we have oscillations again. Close to the end of these stages, they do like to wiggle. Let's thrall down again. Uh, wiggle a lot. Sheesh. Okay, set. And ignition. Well, at least the second stage was alright. NK-19 now, and it looks like we will need the Centaur stage to do a little bit of work to make orbit. Well, something has apparently stopped our roll, possibly just the stage set. 
or the weird oscillations prior to his separation. Oh, and don't worry, I have thought of having the Deimos lander bounce around to other biomes of Deimos. But uh, we'll do that when we are in serious need of science. Right now, if we take a look at our technology list, it's rather full. <laughs> we're, we're waiting for a lot of technology. What we really need is more science points. Um, but yeah, well, we don't need to be unlocking more technologies right now, and we've got other science just sitting waiting for us to use. So we'll let the Deimos probe cool it for a while. Okay, here we go. Looks like we'll need 300 meters per second from the Centaur. Ignition. So, not including the RCS fuel in the probe, we're going to be left with about 8,200 meters per second. And we are in orbit of 239 by 234. Alright, let's plot for Jupiter. Okay, well, we have a plot for Jupiter, and it's going to cost 6,411 meters per second. Uh, we are at a very good time to approach Jupiter, and to make it easier to get into orbit, I am passing by Jupiter along this side, and, uh, well, the trouble with that is, of course, we will be retrograde with everything else, so, but that that's just a toss-up. I don't know if it's going to make too much of a difference, but I do want to eventually get this into orbit around Jupiter. A loose orbit, though. Um, maybe, maybe I should go along with the rest of the moons. It might be better. Try and get to the other side. I only belatedly realized how close they wanted this thing. It, they needed at an altitude below twenty thousand kilometers, which sounds pretty high if you're talking about Earth, but it is not very high when it comes to Jupiter. The reason it's a good timing is because we're close to one of the nodes. Always nice. So, ascending or descending node, I mean. Okay, that's closer than specified and still pretty good and in the plane of the system as close as we can get it. So, once we get there, we are going to make orbit and we just sort of use up a lot of our fuel, well, at least the unlocked fuel right now. We also have RCS fuel in the probe, but should we want to do something else? But let's say we get into orbit with 1,300. Now, I only just noticed this this position satellite in stationary orbit of Jupiter. That's going to be hard. And that's going to be hard because getting a low orbit around Jupiter costs a lot, and I forgot about that. Uh, for instance, if we continue trying to pull this orbit down, you can see it gets really nasty once, I mean, we uh, could we get an assist from a moon? Not so much. Not as much as, because the moons of Jupiter are are nice and all, but they, they just don't have the kind of mass to overwhelm Jupiter the way the moons of Jewel would overwhelm Jewel. So, not overwhelm, but I mean at least do a lot for us there in the Kerbal system. So we're talking about trying to make a low orbit. This is a little bit tighter than we need to be, but like 9,000 or so if we really want to get uh, into this orbit. Uh, that's what I would expect. So we're going to need to launch a very large mission in order to make that happen. It's going to be a little bit difficult. But for now, we have this plot. Let's hope we get connection back. I forgot to put out the antennae or train our main dish. There we go. Okay, let's do the things. Interesting, I said toggle antennae on the action group, but it didn't do those. And it's not really letting me click on them very easily either. Well, I've gotten two out. I guess that'll be enough, but I can't click on the other two. Oh well. I'll take it. Let's proceed. Okay, everything's looking good, and I think we should start out soon. Yeah, all right, ignition. Both Centaur, uh, both RL-10s are lit, and the Centaur is starting off our trip to Jupiter.
the Astra's too will have to complete that burn. The Centaur stage has put us on escape successfully and it looks like it'll uh, proceed without any issues. We are currently approaching the west coast of North America and 10 more seconds in the stage. Let's unlock the next stage, and set, and ignition. Alright, on we go. Looks like after the burn to Jupiter, we'll have about 1,700 to 1,800 meters per second left in this stage, and then there's the locked fuel in the probe itself, which on, uh, it only has RCS thrusters though, and pretty small ones too. I hope they're not too small. I recall having some problems with really small RCS thrusters. And let's take with RCS at this point. Hopefully we're pretty close. Of course Jupiter, it's hard to miss it. It's just a matter of getting to the right, right orbit. Pretty close. There we go. That was our intended approach. And that looks pretty good right there. All right, so with that, let's get an alarm. Add new alarm. Uh, oh, that's the next SOI change. Um, let's put a dummy maneuver for when we enter Jupiter SOI. Or maybe we should just wait until we're at periapsis. Well, no, let's check when we enter Jupiter SOI. It's a long trip from entering Jupiter SOI to periapsis, but... So a two-year wait, two year and 98 days. And let's see, maneuver node, yes, let's add that alarm. Okay, so long trip in, it'll be quite a while before we get fulfillment of the Jupiter flyby contract. I hope we have enough time for that. It doesn't show that contract here, let's see, and... Okay, yeah, it is enough time. And our other contract to position a satellite in stationary orbit of Jupiter, that's uh, that's got a long ways yet. And we'll need it because that's going to take a whole lot of Delta V. Um, in total, including launch, 33,000 minimum kind of thing. Okay, so with that, having a successful Deimos mission and a probe on its way to Jupiter, I think it's time to wrap it up and we'll continue on with other things. We'll have to pick up a new set of contracts and see what we can do. Maybe we will try this, these uh, crew duration missions. We've got a mission for three crew and also to stay in space for seven days. We'll see about that. But for now, oh, oh yeah, okay, okay. I was looking at the position satellite and stationary of Jupiter and uh, noted the missing barometer, but that's not this mission anyway. So, all right. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.